Side hustles make middlemen millions. So what does that even mean? Well, there's a lot of these platforms like Uber, eBay, YouTube, where you can go and you can make a little bit of money on the side. The draw of this actually makes people want to pursue it full time and some actually succeed in doing so. In many cases, you are providing a product or you are the product and these services are nothing but a middleman. They're nothing but a platform for you to offer your service on. So for the example of YouTube, there'd be nothing without uh, creators to provide videos. eBay would be nothing without the products to sell on the platform. Stock photography sites as well. They have nothing without the actual photos and videos to sell. We're going to take a look at that and we're actually going to think about some alternative ways of thinking instead of using these platforms. I haven't sold anything on eBay for a while and I recently sold a camera. Final value fee is 30 cents plus a percentage of the order, which includes the price, any handling charges, shipping costs, and sales tax collected from the sale. So in my case, it was a 13.25% amount plus 30 cents. And that actually adds up to be quite a bit. The item subtotal was actually $1,475 with tax and shipping that brought it up to $1,592.95. After the transaction fees, they were $211.37. So my proceeds from the $1,592.95 order total, $1,243.09. Yet you do have to realize that includes sales tax and shipping, but the transaction fees were pretty insane at $211.37. One thing that eBay really does for people is they provide a platform where you can get top dollar. If I was to sell that item on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, I wouldn't have been able to get top dollar for it and I would have had to dealt with that transaction in person. And you've heard stories about people getting mugged and robbed and all kinds of stuff like that in these transactions. So in a way that service is worthwhile, it just kind of depends on what you're selling and how much more you can get for it from eBay versus a platform like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Next, we're gonna look at one of my favorites and it's stock photography. This is Shutterstock. They use a tiered system and each year your tier level resets. So you are level one until you get 100 photo sales and you're earning 15%. I've got quite a few assets on Shutterstock and amazingly passed level one on the first day of the year, which was a pretty amazing milestone in my stock photography and I was pretty happy about that. So on level two, you have to sell 250 images, and until you sell 250 images total, you're at 20%. Up to 500 image sales, you're gonna be at 25%, but once you pass that, you'll go up to the 30% tier. The most you can make is 40%, and that's if you've sold over 2,500 photos on the platform. So even if you are a major top contributor with Shutterstock, the most you can make is 40%. They're taking 60% of your earnings. And this is a platform that essentially gives you hosting and they sell the products, they sell subscriptions and they'll sell them individually. Shutterstock is taking at least 60% for the service and they have no platform without the photos. So that's something to think about. Changing directions a little bit, we're gonna take a look at Amazon Associates. This is affiliate marketing and it's affiliate marketing for Amazon. So if you're selling their games, they're gonna give you a, a lofty commission of 20%. But if you're selling something like physical video games or groceries or something like that, they're only gonna give you 1%. You get nothing for gift cards. The beauty of Amazon affiliates is people are gonna be shopping at Amazon regardless if you post links to these products or not. I feel like Amazon could actually get rid of the affiliate program and they would do just fine. So take that as you will. The last of these services that I do is YouTube. And I am a YouTube partner with over a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. So I am monetized on my channel. I get AdSense revenue from each of the views. And YouTube pays contributors 55% of net revenues. And I can tell you the CPM is what the YouTube 
is charging the advertisers for these and the RPM is what the contributor is actually earning. And my RPM is certainly less than half of my CPM, but that has a lot of other factors that go into it. My YouTube channel is currently making about $25 a month, so I don't think I'm gonna retire off of that anytime soon. One cool thing about the platform though is they allow you to do external links and other marketing. So if you wanna do affiliate marketing or you're, you have a product or service that you wanna sell, it's perfect for that. Some other platforms that people are using are something like Uber, where I've done a little bit of research and it looks like you might be lucky if you get 50% of the fare. I'd like to hear from some actual Uber drivers to hear if, if that's been your experience as well. Uh, DoorDash is also something that you're not going to make a ton of money. And I feel like it's almost always better with these side hustles if you could get a full time or part time job. I know one of the major draws of them is the flexibility. So you can do them whenever you want and however much you want. And that is a nice feature to have. But a lot of the time these are paying way below minimum wage. For example, with my stock photography, I'm making about $100 a month or so, give or take. And that's like probably well under a dollar an hour if I broke it down to going out, taking pictures, editing them, keywording them, all that. It's uh, it's pennies. I mean, I'm making basically pennies per hour to do that, but it's kind of fun and it gives me a little bit of extra pocket change each month. Sometimes a change in perspective is what we need because a lot of the times these platforms are getting a lot of money off of people, but they're not actually getting that much in return. And so I think one of the lessons out of this is if you wanna make a lot of money and you wanna make a lot of money on the side, maybe don't go into one of these side hustle platforms, maybe actually build a side hustle platform. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but that's what these people did. So eBay, they just thought maybe somebody needs a place to sell. Same with the Shutterstock. They thought maybe people just need a platform to sell these stock photos. They could get the customers, they could build the platform and sell the photos for photographers and they could go out and actually take pictures. It's certainly not easy, but I feel like if I would have took all the time that I put into stock photography and YouTube and some of these other side hustle type platforms that I could have certainly built something on my own that would be making a lot more money than what I actually made doing these side hustle type deals. Anyways, what are your thoughts on that? I'd like to hear that. Please comment below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Till the next time.